If you're into skincare, you've probably heard about exosomes. They are everywhere these days, especially in cosmetic treatments. I first started hearing about them in my dermatologist's office about two years ago, but now I really do feel like exosomes are everywhere and we're just going to continue hearing about them. So I went out and I spent about $300 on each of these serums and decided we're gonna do a video on exosomes and everything you need to know. Because this is a newer technology in skincare and it's also a complicated topic, I decided to reach out to the experts. In this video, you'll be hearing from Dr. Bebe Du Harper. She's an NHS dermatologist in the UK, and she also has a PhD in molecular medicine, and also Dr. Nina Desai. She's a board certified dermatologist in Manhattan Beach, California. All right, I'm gonna throw out there, exosomes seem very confusing. Just hearing the word makes my brain go like, Phew. it's like that emoji, right? It's very similar to the way I was really confused when I started hearing about peptides a few years back, peptides in skincare specifically. But now that I've learned a little bit more about them, I actually think that peptides can be a lot more confusing than exosomes. And by the way, they're not the same thing at all. Because of the way that I've seen exosomes being touted and the way that I'm seeing them being used basically in dermatology offices and esthetician offices, I'm mostly seeing them being used in place of PRP. So my first thought was they must be stem cells or something similar to that. So here's what Dr. Bebe has to say. Are exosomes stem cells? No, they are not. Exosomes themselves are not cellular at all. They are these vesicles, but they are derived or made by cells. So people often associate exosomes with stem cells because a lot of the innovation in exosome research has been in relation to stem cells. So stem cells are cells that are defined by their ability to become multiple cell types, and they are also able to self-renew. So scientists have been searching for signals or special peptides or molecules that may be enabling this self-renewal within stem cells for decades. And this is where the interest in stem cell-derived exosomes has come from. However, in reality, when you remove stem cells from their niche, which is the location where they naturally self-renew. And in the skin, this is, for example, the basal layer of the epidermis, they actually immediately lose some of their stemness. So it's really not a straightforward process understanding this. How are exosomes different from PRP? So platelet-rich plasma is actually a form of autologous cell therapy. Autologous means that the cells came from yourself. And the aim of this kind of minimally invasive cell therapy is to facilitate some sort of accelerated healing, growth, or repair. And you generate PRP by using a centrifuge to concentrate platelets within a fraction of blood. And this is drawn from whoever is receiving the treatment. Platelets play an important role in healing and repair throughout the body, which is why they've been used as a regenerative medicine treatment. But the exact mechanism of PRP is actually still somewhat unclear. And it's being suggested that it's the exosomes that platelets produce that provide the benefits rather than the cells themselves. And there is some research data to support this. So another category to mention is conditioned media, which is essentially the soup in which cells are cultured in petri dishes in a lab. So you may have come across products based on stem cell conditioned media, which again is based on a concept that stem cells create unique self-renewal or regenerative signals that can be harnessed in some ways. So this soup that they're grown in, which we would normally discard in the lab, some believe has some skin or hair regeneration benefits. I already know that makes it even more confusing in some ways because if exosomes are not stem cells, but they're made by cells, then what exactly are they? So what are exosomes? Exosomes are little vesicles that are produced by cells to communicate with other cells. They're really tiny, about 30 to 150 nanometers in size, and they're coated with lipids, which means that they can seamlessly exit and then integrate with and enter other cells and deliver their cargo of molecules. And this cargo can include a cocktail of protein, lipids, and nucleic acids. And this totally varies depending on the cell of origin and the circumstances in which the exosomes were actually produced. So I know a lot of mixed makeup viewers will be familiar with the concept of encapsulation in skincare. And you can think of exosomes as being a form of biological encapsulation. And I think it's important to realize that exosomes are not an ingredient. It's more like a delivery system. And what's most important in any delivery system is what is actually being delivered, which is really all about where the exosomes were sourced and how they were generated. To really simplify what she's saying, exosomes are basically a delivery system. They're super tiny and they're lipid coated. And the lipid coated part is really important because our skin barrier is made of different lipids. So if the exosomes can deliver the ingredients into our skin, that means that it can penetrate a little bit better and we're gonna see better results. I love that she mentioned encapsulation. You know how much I love encapsulation when it comes to ingredients, especially ingredients that can be really unstable like your vitamin C and different antioxidants. With these two products specifically, instead of the encapsulation, the exosomes, delivering just ingredients like antioxidants or copper peptides, something like that, you're actually getting really interesting ingredients. Like in this one, you're getting human platelet extract. 
That's super interesting, right? And in this one, you're getting stem cells that are derived from human umbilical cords. I know it sounds disgusting, but it definitely sounds interesting. And what I've really noticed with these types of exosome brands is that they're taking information or proof that there's a lot of benefits to wound healing when you use these types of exosomes. And then they're equating that wound healing to the benefits you get to anti-aging, which we see a lot when it comes to cosmetics. So it makes a lot of sense that you would see exosomes promoted in cosmetic offices because in those offices, they do a lot of treatments like microneedling. They also do different types of injections. And we've seen in the past that PRP, platelet-rich plasma, is really popular in, uh, in a lot of these cosmetic offices. So it makes sense that you would see this starting to be used as well. Exosomes are little packets that contain cells and signals to amplify our body's ability to produce collagen and our body's ability to heal itself. Exosomes fall into the category of regenerative medicine, similar to PRP or platelet-rich plasma. The difference is PRP comes from our own blood. We draw blood, we spin it down, we take out the platelet-rich plasma, and then we use that. Whereas exosomes are something that we purchase from an outside laboratory. The exosomes that we purchase are derived from stem cells and they are the cells and signals that are then used in cosmetic treatments to help amplify the wound healing process and the stimulation of collagen and elastin. They can be used to help improve fine lines, tone, texture, the overall health of the skin. We also use exosomes and PRP in hair restoration. Typically what we're gonna do is we are going to microneedle the skin or the scalp first to create micro channels that then we will infuse the exosomes into. In my clinic, we've seen amazing results with exosomes, but the one important thing to understand is that these results do not happen overnight. Regenerative processes take time and multiple treatments. So I always tell my clients when we start something like microneedling, whether it be with PRP, platelet-rich plasma, which comes from your own blood, or exosomes, which are stem cell-derived packets of cells and signals that we purchase from a company, it will take multiple treatments and you'll see those results about six months after we start our treatments. So after hearing all of that, exosomes sound amazing, right? But there is always a catch, especially when it comes to cosmetics. And I think that regulation plays a huge part, especially regulations by country, because now we know the benefits you get from exosomes also depends on what it is the exosome contains and is delivering to your skin. What's the best way to get the benefits of exosomes? So type of exosome available for use really varies by region due to regulations. So in the EU, it is illegal to provide human derived products topically or post-procedure. A lot of the exosomes that you might come across here may be plant-based and there's not that much research behind them. They're much smaller and deliver less potent packages, even theoretically, than human exosomes. Animal derived exosomes are available in the UK and the EU you and they are more similar to human ones, but you know, they're still obviously not human. In the US, human derived exosomes are legal, but no exosome product has been approved to treat any disease by the FDA so far, which is why they have ended up in cosmetics. So what treatments should they be paired with? To be honest, the jury is still out on how best to use exosomes and what's the safest way to use them. And I think this is also why the regulatory situation worldwide is quite variable and different regulators clearly have different thresholds for risk. And there needs to be more robust and reproducible research to help support that acceptance by regulatory bodies as a form of regenerative medicine that we can use to benefit patients. At present, exosomes are kind of sliding into a bit of a regulatory gray zone, which in the short term may enable their use in cosmetics, but we need to make sure that this doesn't mean that their full potential as a medicine may never get realized. It's also really important to point out that exosomes are not considered a drug treatment by the FDA. That doesn't mean that it won't be considered that in the future after more research has been done, but right now they're considered a cosmetic. So the effectiveness that you get from certain exosomes and certain brands is all really dependent on their own clinicals and on their stability and the formulation. And I also want to point out, if you are at a cosmetic office and you see them touting exosome products as medical grade, remember, Medical grade is a marketing term. It is a made up term. It does not mean anything. Any brand can call themselves medical grade. Even when they do clinicals, any brand, doesn't matter the price point or anything, can conduct clinical studies on their products. It's just expensive to do that. So not every brand does it. So if you are looking into exosome products, I would look into companies that have robust science behind their products and clinical 
child data. And although I think the science and theory behind it is super exciting, I don't know the ins and outs of any exosome products specifically well enough to feel comfortable using it myself or recommending it to others just yet. That doesn't mean that there aren't good exosome products out there. It's just that I don't have access to that information. A lot of it may be confidential or proprietary data, but I would always look for um, clinical trial evidence in this specific category. And, you know, if they allow you access to that, that would be fantastic. All right, the first product I want to talk about is this one from Elevi. This is the Infinity Exosome Regenerative Serum. I do want to point out, they tell this as a product to use after you get an in-office treatment. So think laser treatments, microneedling, and maybe even chemical peels. This is something that's supposed to help your skin heal faster. So that's truly how they're promoting it. The ingredients that you get in here, the exosomes contain human stem cells from umbilical cords. I know, sounds disgusting, but that's what you get in here. They also have antioxidants like vitamin C derivatives in here. There's hyaluronic acid, and then there's also copper peptides. So I find this to be a really interesting product to use, not just after a treatment, but in general, but really the usage for this that they're touting is after a treatment for your skin healing, your wound healing. I've been using it for a month, so can I see a huge difference in my skin? Not really. The serum is pretty typical in the texture and I'm not going to waste that. I'm going to apply it to my skin. This one I do find smells awful. Oh, like it makes me want to vomit a little bit or maybe it's because it smells like vomit. And also I find that it can really pill when I use it in the morning time. Like it doesn't matter. You know, you can't really tell which ingredients you're gonna pair with it, which products you're gonna pair with it that are going to make it pill. So even though it says in the directions to use it morning and night, I find that I am only using this at night. So I don't know if I'm getting the full potential of the benefits because I'm not using it morning and night. I'm only using it at nighttime because it does make a lot of my products pill. It dries down really fast, but it smells like shit. It is gonna go away in a little while, especially as I put other products on top of it, but it does smell. So if you're sensitive to that and if you hate pilling, and this one might not be the one for you, but it's definitely really interesting. And I haven't seen huge changes yet though. So it's been only a month and I'll keep you updated on it. Now for this one from Plated, this is their intense serum. They use revolutionary renewsome technology. I don't really know what that means. The way that they're touting it is that it's platelet derived technology. So this has human platelets in it. So think PRP, they're using human platelets in this with the exosomes. It's a little bit more of a straightforward serum. They say to use it once a day instead. You can see it's a much smaller bottle as well. It's only 15 milliliters, whereas this one is 30 milliliters. So you're getting a lot more in this one. The plated one is a much better experience, but you're not getting those additional antioxidants and copper peptides that you get in the Elevi product. But I do find that this does not have a disgusting smell to it. It has some kind of a smell, but it's not disgusting. And I find that it dries down nicer and you can use it morning or night. They also, instead of just touting wound healing, which they do tout just like the Elevi one, they're also promoting that it helps with wrinkles. It also helps with any kinds of dark spots or redness. So this seemed like they were promoting more of like a, it helps with any kind of skin issue that you're kind of dealing with, whether it comes to redness, dark spots, or aging or wound healing. So definitely an interesting one. I think that this is a much better experience, but you're getting half of the product for about the same price. Of course, I'll keep you updated on how usage of these products go. I'm actually gonna do a chemical peel. I'm gonna do a Cosmolon and then use these afterwards. This one is a little bit newer to my routine. I've only been using it for about a week, but this one I've been using for a month. And I, I would say that my skin looks good, but I wouldn't say it's any better so far, but we'll see how this works out after I use them after my, my Cosmo on peel. I do want to throw out there, there are tons of other brands and the ones that your doctors choose to use in office can vary. So for instance, when I was talking to Dr. Nita Desai, she talked about a brand that she really loves to use in office. So product wise in our office, we use an exosome company called Benev. Their research has been wonderful and their products have worked really well for us. I typically don't recommend at home exosomes or PRP. In order for PRP or exosomes to really work, you need to create those channels in the skin in order for the exosomes to get absorbed, the microneedling needs to be done first. So at home, applying something topically just won't give you the right penetration or the right absorption. So I actually reserve both PRP or exosomes to be done only in office. 
So that is exosomes in a nutshell. Of course, we kind of broke it down and simplified what you need to know about exosomes. I think we're just gonna continue hearing so much more about how exosomes are used in skincare and specifically in office when it comes to your cosmetic treatments. So if you have any questions around it, if you've seen it talked about maybe in your dermatologist's office or in your esthetician's office or in some kind of a med spa, and we didn't answer that kind of a topic in this video, please feel free to ask in the comments below because we can always make a second video. For me, this is a lot of comprehending and learning about exosomes as well. So as I learn more, I'll obviously start to share more too. I hope this video was super helpful. You can find me on social media if you wanna ask any other questions there. I'm at Susan Yara and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.